Howdy folks, you're listening to Smarticus Tells History, the podcast where we discuss some of the wacky and crazy stories your friends may have told you. So sit down, have a beer or two, and let's learn a thing or two. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Glad to have you here. I am your host, Smarticus. On this week's episode of Smarticus Tells History, we are diving back to the era of Spartacus himself. In fact, the very place that Spartacus and many other gladiators fought and even died at. That's right, the Roman Colosseum. Now, whenever I personally think of the Colosseum, I tend to think about all the battles that were held there, and of course the many movies that were made about it. Gladiator in particular being one of my favorites. But there are many other stories that follow the Colosseum. First, let's start with the construction. It was the first and largest amphitheater constructed of its time. It could hold up to 50,000 spectators. It was four stories high, standing at 150 feet at its tallest. It has a width of 189 by 156 meters. The arena itself measures 87.5 meters by 54.8 meters. It even had a canvas roof on it to help protect its spectators from the sun bearing down on them. The Colosseum took about 10 years to build, and was built for the sole purpose of bloodshed. A few things you may not know about the Colosseum, though. For starters, it was not originally named the Colosseum. In fact, it was originally named the Flavian Amphitheater, as it was constructed during the Flavian dynasty that ruled at that time. It was built by the Roman Emperor Vespasian, or Vespasian, who ruled from 69 to 79 CE. For those that don't know, CE is an abbreviation much like BC, only it stands for Common Era. Usually regarding Roman history, you will see BCE, which means Before Common Era, and then again CE for Common Era. Anyways, the construction began in 72 CE during the reign of Vespasian. The location that it was built upon was once the lake and gardens of Emperor Nero's Golden House. The lake was drained and a concrete foundation was laid of 6 meters deep. The foundation was made so large in an effort to prevent damage from earthquakes. The Colosseum was a part of a series of buildings to be built as part of an effort to show the world that Rome was still the center of the world after its many civil wars. In the year 80 CE, after Vespasian's rule, his son Titus declared that the arena was opened and began the famous 100 Days of Games. During those 100 days, it is estimated that 90,000 animals were killed, and at one point, 5,000 were killed in a single day, as well as nearly 2,000 people were killed in that 100 days. Now, in total, it is estimated that over 1 million animals were killed and half a million people died in the Colosseum over its 400 years of being in use. The building itself was constructed primarily of limestone with internally linking walls of brick, concrete, and even volcanic stone known as Tuffa. As a matter of fact, mortar was not even used in the construction to hold the stones together. Instead, iron clamps held the stones in place. So if you have ever wondered why the Colosseum looks like it was barraged with a bunch of bullets and cannons, well that's because that's where the clamps held it in place. The outside of the Colosseum was actually covered in marble as well, making what would have been quite an amazing sight to see. The building quickly donned the nickname the Colosseum in part from its size, but it is also thought to have received its name from the colossal bronze statue of Nero. That statue was actually later converted to resemble the sun goddess Helios. The statue itself was named the Colossus of Rhodes due to standing at a whopping 105 feet tall, which actually stood in front of the Colosseum all the way until the 4th century, until it fell as a result of an earthquake. No one actually knows what happened to its remains. The statue is never depicted very well either, so any pictures that you may see of it are all simply guesses and slightly different from each other. The Colosseum itself was actually free for Romans to attend the games. Most of the time, the emperor himself would pay for the people to attend. Instead of tickets like you would see today, the people were actually handed pieces of pottery that was numbered according to their social status. Which, okay, kind of like a ticket. Overall, there was a total of 76 entrances, and each one numbered to allow the spectator to know where they were to be seated according to the number on their pottery piece. 
much as I said, like our own ticket system works for the most part, but they weren't actually regular paper tickets like we have today. Another fun fact you may not be aware of was that the Colosseum was not always used for the bloody battles that it was built for. There was actually a regular schedule that it had to adhere to. Usually in the mornings there would be a show of animals, sometimes just a parade, or on occasion animal hunts. The entire arena would be set up in a particular theme of a specific animal that was to be hunted. Sometimes it was the emperor who would hunt these animals in the replicated environments, although they never actually left the box seat and would just shoot at the animals with a bow and arrow. Gladiators would be trained to fight with the animals, sometimes even including a background scene, and if you were a condemned criminal, it was also not uncommon for you to have to fight the animals with nothing but your bare hands, and if you lived, you may have been set free. Much like depicted in the movie Gladiator, there were also 36 trap doors hidden within the arena that would often give a sort of special effect. If you ever find yourself in Rome, you can actually tour those underground tunnels and traps. By the time noon would roll around, there would be executions, many different ways sometimes. On occasion, torture would be used, or sometimes using a wild animal to attack a tied-up prisoner like you see in a lot of action movies. Later in the afternoon was when the famous gladiator fights would take place. Famous battles would be reenacted or just a single simple fight to the death. On occasion, it was just a regular fight between gladiators, neither of which would die. Kind of like boxing. With swords. Unfortunately, with the changing times, the Colosseum eventually became just a memory. In the year 404 CE, the Emperor Honorus abolished the games, but oddly still made criminals fight wild animals. That actually lasted for a whole century before it too would be put to an end. In 422 CE, the Colosseum was damaged by an earthquake. However, it was repaired by Emperor Theodosius II and Valentinian III. It was repaired numerous more times and continued to be used for wrestling matches and animal hunts all the way until the 6th century. However, after standing for almost 600 years, the building began to show a lot of signs of wear and tear. The great building was slowly becoming neglected and grass began to grow in the arena. Then, after another 600 years, in 1231 CE, the southwest facade collapsed in another earthquake. It was after this earthquake that the Colosseum began to be slowly deconstructed brick by brick for material to be used in other structures. The iron clamps that held the limestone and marble in place were removed, along with several of the columns that made it such a magnificent piece of architecture. Much of the material was actually stolen, along with numerous statues that once stood in its archways and halls. Pope Alexander VI actually leased the Colosseum as a quarry. Regardless of its state, though, it was still used on occasion for religious ceremonies and plays. Luckily, in 1744 CE, Pope Benedict XIV prohibited any further removal of the remaining masonry and consecrated it in the memory of the many Christian martyrs who lost their lives. It is because of his actions there is still part of the Colosseum for us to view. A final fun fact, in 1844, a man by the name of Richard Deacon cataloged over 420 different plant species that were thriving in the arena. Some were rare and even locally unique to the arena. Well folks, that's all I have for this week's episode. A little reminder to please leave a review of the podcast and let us know what changes you would like to see to improve this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, and if you have heard any wacky and crazy stories that you want told here, you can go to our Facebook page at Smarticus Tales History and leave a comment. Now, with that being said, I'll see you next time, and you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, and awesome day. Bye now.